Okay, so um, in September of 2012, like you got to understand that when I started trucking, I graduated college in 07, and in like January of 08, I went to lunch with my mom and my uncle and my papa. And my papa ran into somebody that he knew from the 60s or 70s or 80s or like a long, long time ago. And he said, you know, this is my daughter, uh, this is my son, Ray, this is my daughter, Kathy. And he turned to me and he said, what's your name? All right, like, it's this big joke that when I started working for my grandfather, we didn't have that, like, loving, Mayberry, grandfather, papa kind of relationship. Um, he, in 20, 2008, still believed that girls were useless and that we needed more boys to run the business. So he gave me a job, but he wasn't really sure what I was going to do. He wasn't sure that I was going to be good at anything. And... I spent so little time with my grandfather that he did not know my name, all right? He knew this guy from 30 years ago. He knew his name. He knew his wife's name. He wasn't old. He wasn't senile. There was nothing wrong with my papa's brain. He just didn't have a relationship with me. He didn't know my name. So when I started working for him, uh, I was, you know, kind of always looking for his approval, right? And he didn't know my name. He didn't know why I was working for him. He didn't know what I was going to do that would contribute to anything. And he just didn't see any value in me, all right? But fast forward to 2011, and my papa and I are like this, all right? I'm flipping trucks. He figured out that dirty old men liked buying dirty old trucks from me instead of from some other dirty old man. And he figured out that I was useless and I, or I was useful and that I was smart and that he could use me in the business and I had a pretty good business mind. So, uh, in 2011, in September of 2011, like, I, I'd been going to auctions with mom. I helped her buy that 15 acres next to hers and papa's 15 acres. I'd been to auctions with both of them. I'd been, you know, to the salvage yard. I'd been nosing around in some of the real estate deals. I was really starting to take a liking to this real estate thing, but I was still, you know, young, and I didn't know what I was doing, and... I was still just learning everything I could from my mom, from my dad, and from my papa. But they were just kind of shooting from the hip. None of them had any formulas. They didn't have any strategies. They didn't, like now that I speak real estate, I realize that my family, even though they've been investors for 100 years, they don't speak real estate. They just do it the old, slow, boring way that they know how to do it and they've never branched out and they've never learned different strategies and they, they're they just kind of doing it for a side thing, just for the fun. So anyway, I, I'd i been going to auctions with them for a couple years and um, during the recession, uh, some of our equipment had gotten repoed, gotten repossessed in 08 or 09 because we couldn't make the payments on it. We owed like... You know, we had yellow iron, so we had excavators, we had bulldozers, we had, um, you know, trucks, we had all those things running, trying to make a business, but, you know, we couldn't make our payments on them. So they were going to come repo our equipment that we were using to try to make money so we could make the payments on the equipment. Well, there's one repo company on Rutledge Pike, and so they repoed our equipment and they hauled all of our equipment down to their holding yard. Um, which was really embarrassing because there's our yellow iron at the repo yard. Clearly, we're not making enough money to make our payments. And everybody in town can see the yellow iron that's sitting on the repo lot that's widely known as the repo lot with a big sticker on it that says Walker's Truck Contractors. Like, I know people were losing their houses and people were losing their 401ks, but this was my family's pride on the line sitting on this lot at the repo company and it was just embarrassing and lots of other people had stuff there but it was this had been our our piece of the world this had been where we'd been building this big empire for 
you know, like 70 years and now we're getting stuff repoed and we can't make our payments and we're struggling to make the payroll so that the drivers can get paid so that they'll keep coming to work. And like, it was tough. It was really tough. And I'm sitting there, you know, just like making $500 a week and thinking, well, maybe I should not collect my check so that one of the drivers will be able to get their $500 uh, or, you know, maybe my $500 should go towards making a payment on some of this equipment so that we can keep our equipment. Like, I'm trying to figure out, because I'm living in mom's rental house now, um, which she's got free and clear. So, you know, my rent is not exactly doing a whole lot. So if I didn't make any money, you know, I knew my mom would still buy groceries and I could go to her house and eat dinner. And I knew my mom and my papa were coming out of pocket every week to make the payroll. And they just couldn't afford to make the payments on this equipment. So I'm trying to think what I could give up to help the family keep the company going, right? Because um, a very smart lady, uh, Pat, I can't think of her last name right now, uh, Crumley, Pat Crumley, uh, gave my papa some advice the summer of 2012 and she said you know if the trunk of the tree dies then the branches will die also and what she was trying to say is that my papa was the trunk of our tree and if he ran out of money if he ran out of oxygen if he ran out of food source then the rest of our branches would die also so it was better to trim some of the branches than for the whole trunk of the tree to die. She actually told them, told him this in 2011, but um, they were repoing our stuff in 09. So in 09, um, our equipment was down at the repo yard and it was at this building on Rutledge Pike. And I don't know exactly, I remember working with some lady who did, uh, she was like a third party consultation um, that worked with the banks and the repo people and the small businesses. Um, and somehow we worked out a deal and we paid a bunch of money, not what we owed, but we paid a bunch of money and we got our equipment back. All right. So we did get our equipment back and, you know, we just had to go with, everybody else in 09 who was losing houses and equipment left and right but we ended up settling and getting our equipment back so we can start making money again all right so two years later in 2011 I think it was actually August of 2011 we closed in September in August of 2011 um, this building the repo building came up for sale at auction and my papa was having some uh, doctor's things going on and he was having to go to the doctor a lot and he was scheduled to have a surgery on uh, or to have a scan or something done in like the next day in August and uh, so we went to this auction and on Rutledge Pike everybody on Rutledge Pike knows that when something goes up for sale the walkers are going to go buy it so sure enough, mom and papa and I went and looked at the building, looked at the lot, and it was where our stuff had been parked at the repo lot just two years before. And there was like maybe three or four people there for the auction, like not a big, huge crowd because it was on Relish Pike and everybody kind of knew that we were just going to go buy it and no big deal. Um, so we got to the auction and the auctioneer started rattling and my papa had on, he didn't have on a big Stetson hat. But my papa was redheaded and he had fair skin like I do. And I don't have red hair, but I definitely have sensitive redheaded skin. Um, so my papa had on his little, his brimmed hat and he didn't smoke a cigar anymore. But he, you know, was just standing there at the auction and everybody knew who he was because uh, he was Mr. Walker. And there was this guy bidding. And the auctioneer that was, uh, you know, rattling and doing the call was, you know, cracking jokes because he'd sold my papa, you know, dozens of property, lots of stuff. You know, this is the same guy that does the truck and equipment auctions. So him and my papa go way back. All right. And uh, so they were joking and kidding around. And, uh, you know, then they'd call a bid and then they'd tell a joke. And, you know, papa was just kind of talking to him, no big deal. And, you know, spending $100,000, then $110,000, then $120,000. And um, there was another guy there who was bidding on the property, and it turned out that uh, where this lot is, imagine a block, okay? So you're, if you look down on it, there's a block, and it's, 
it's divided into fours, you know, just like that. And one guy owns the back corner, another guy owns the other back corner, one other guy owns the front corner, and then we're standing on the other front corner, okay? So the guy that owns the front corner on this side is bidding against my papaw who wants this front corner also, all right? And this guy walks over to my papa, who is 80, 83 years old. He's an old dude, but he's very with it. And he, this guy tells my papa, he's like, dude, I got more money than you. I can buy this. You can keep bidding it up if you want to, but you don't have to. You can just go ahead and let me buy it. And my papa looked at him and he was like, you do what you got to do, and I'm going to do what I've got to do. And that guy was like, dude, I just told you I'm going to buy this, and I'm going to keep bidding it up. And my papa was like, you do what you got to do, and I'll do what I got to do. Basically saying, basically calling this dude's bluff and being like, I don't care what you bid. I'm going to buy this. So they bid back and forth. They had a little bit of a conflict there at the auction, and mom and I are standing there going, um, and we got up to where we thought, you know, the property was going to be worth. And uh, the other guy quit bidding. And my papa hit it one more time. And the auctioneer called it on my papa. And so he, he bought that building that day. Like, two years earlier, our equipment, we couldn't make the payments on our equipment. And the building, these people had repoed our equipment. Killed our pride, killed almost our entire business, our entirely livelihood, and then because we kept going and we had the perseverance and the determination that this was just a rough patch in the road, two years later we're standing at that building and buying the land for, you know, just whatever we want to pay for it. Just going to write a check and buy this property. So, um, now still today in 2017, uh, we've had this building and I rented it out to a satellite company. Um, and then I rented it out. <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Uh, the second time I rented this building for my mom, uh, I rented it to a repo company. <laughs> so again, now we own the building and there's a repo company, different repo company, but there's another repo company in that building and there's still people that drive by and see their houses, uh, not their houses, but they see their cars, they see their trucks, they see their campers, they see their boats, they see their equipment in the repo yard. But we have come full circle to where now we own the repo yard and the repo people are paying us rent. So we went from being behind the fence to owning the fence and making money off the repo yard. Um, my papa, though, damn, this is the part that's going to make me cry. So the next day he went to the doctor and they told him that he needed to have surgery. And so in September, um, he, between August and September, um, we changed some things, um, because he bought the property in the company's name and my mom was a signer for the company. So my papa had surgery in September and we closed on the property like three days after he had surgery and he died in like a month. And he was like my best friend and the best mentor I've ever had. And I didn't learn nearly enough from him. He had a lot more to teach me, but luckily enough, I did have like a solid three years with him to learn how to flip trucks and learn how to buy properties and make money and keep going. He was 
a very smart businessman. He was probably not a really good daddy, not a really good grandfather, but a really good mentor. A really smart man. And I miss him a whole lot. But I know I hear stories all the time of, you know, Papa doing some crazy deal. My dad said that Papa always had, like, ever since my dad has known my Papa, he's had more deals going than Monty Hall. So making deals, doing deals, like, that's, that's my favorite part. You know, the, the money, the money is fun, but it's really, it's entertaining is what it is. It's really fun to do these deals. It's really, I, I love, you know, the pressure of being at that auction and the history of that building and, you know, everything that it means to my family and what it'll mean, you know, to my kids and my family. And I just, I love that story so much of that auction and that property. And it was the last one that Papa bought, and I'm so glad that I had a job, you know, working for the family company so that I, I'd experienced that whole thing with them. And I got to go with them to the auction and learn that you do what you gotta do, and I'm gonna do what I gotta do, and just keep going. You have to keep going. Uh, and mom went, and I went with mom to the closing to make sure we got the property. And I love that building. I love that story. So, that's enough for now.